This morning I'm reading from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel! And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of everyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and to more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And as all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, there have been times when I was really excited and I told my wife, who's a mental health therapist, that God spoke to me today. And she would look at me very suspiciously and ask, did this voice speak to you from inside your head or from outside your head? I want to talk today about hearing God's voice in your lives. The scripture for today is the classic tale of God's call to the prophet Samuel. In the lectionary readings, it's the beginning of Samuel's ministry, just as John's baptism is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And Samuel's answer to God's call parallels the disciples' answer to the call of Jesus to become fishers of men. Overall, the message is about how we are all called by God. The prophet Samuel was a special child, and he was given over to be raised as a priest when he was very young. And it seems that Samuel's primary task was to be an assistant to the aging high priest Eli. Now, Eli took Samuel in like a son, as his own sons had become wicked. And then one night, while they were asleep in the temple, Samuel hears a voice calling him, Samuel? Samuel? And so Samuel gets up and thinking he's to help Eli. I don't know, maybe his candle went out, maybe he needed something to drink, maybe he needed help to the bathroom. Whatever the reason, Samuel presented himself dutifully to Eli and said, you called? And Eli, 
I like to think he was a little annoyed. At least I'd be annoyed if somebody kept waking me up in the middle of the night. He says, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. Now when this happened a third time, Eli wisely saw what was going on and he advised Samuel that this was the voice of God and the next time he should answer, speak Lord for your servant is listening. Now because Samuel was able to become attuned to God's voice in his heart, Samuel becomes a great prophet who oversaw the change of Jewish governance from the time of the judges to the time of the kings. And God used Samuel as a great spiritual leader, keeping hope alive in the time of Philistine occupation. And he laid hands on God's anointed kings like Saul and David. Just think, none of this would have happened if Samuel had not answered God's call. You know, one of the biggest struggles that pastors encounter is that the people that they minister to don't know that they are also called into ministry. They think it's the minister's job to do everything. The church needs to know that everyone is special in the eyes of God and has special gifts and graces. Oh, maybe they're not called into word and sacrament like ordained ministry, but they are called into a priesthood of believers. The Apostle Peter writes to new Christians in 1 Peter chapter 2 saying, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Well, there you go. What are you waiting for? Go and make disciples. What's that you say? You're waiting for a sign for God to speak to you? Well, do you need, do you need to hear these words from inside your head or from outside of your head? You know, the truth is, I think God speaks to our hearts all the time if we will just listen. Frederick Buchner says, the place that God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. I've also heard it said that a calling is where your gifts meet the needs of the world. And so ask yourself, what makes me happy? What is special about me that I can share? And how am I going to respond in faith? No, not everybody has to be a gifted Sunday school teacher like David Peacock or Hope Nicholson. This towel is hand embroidered by Maggie McKee. And this button was made for our veterans by Betty Tullis. Francis Broom makes phone calls to check on everybody. And look at this beautiful box that was handmade by Roger Polk. And if you really like the flowers around the church, don't forget to say thank you to Phil and Ann Armentrout. And lastly, I'd like to show you this delicious eggplant casserole that was made by Nancy Williams, but hey, that was gone a long time ago. People don't respond to God's call, I think, because they feel they're not qualified. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that God does not call the qualified. God qualifies the called. So the next time that you hear of a need, any need in ministry, Open your heart, say a prayer, and say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening.
And in the prayer life of the church, we have some sad news. We recently lost Bonnie Langford, Chris Pierce, and John Lee, who were longtime members and in close connection to the church. Our hearts go out to their families who have been taking care of them for so long and mourn their loss and also celebrate their heavenly homecoming. But we also have some good news. We're happy to announce the birth of Asher Ernest Gray, who came into this world six pounds, five ounces, 19 and a half inches long. Asher is the son of Daniel and Elizabeth Gray, the grandson of Becky Hines, and the great-grandson of Bud Singletary. He comes into this world with the loving support of many aunts and uncles and cousins who are ready to spoil him rotten. Asher did come into this world a little early by way of C-section, and he's expected to stay in the hospital longer than expected. But Lizzie and Asher are recovering well at the time of this recording, and just keep them in your prayers. Please keep our country in your thoughts and the transition of government and all of those who stand in the way of helping to keep peace. And let's pray for each other. And so as we pray, the Lord be with you. O God, who listens as well as speaks, help us to silence the voices that shout at us, creating anxiety and chaos. But help us to quiet our hearts and hear what you are saying to us every day. Remind us of the assurance that we are your special people. And give us the encouragement that you go with us if we just trust in your spirit. Let us look to the example of our Lord, who, when times were tough, wanted the cup of suffering to be taken away and still said, not my will, but thine be done. We pray for our nation and a smooth transition of government, knowing that our salvation does not rest in a president of any country, but the king of our hearts. Call us once again, Lord, and help us to listen. Give us the courage to respond as your servants. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. And now may the Lord continue to watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. <laughs>